This is a podcast of the Radcliffe Department of Medicine. Professor David Jackson tells us about the role of the lymphatic system in immunity and cancer. Hello David. Hi. What is the lymphatic system? The lymphatic system is basically the fluid drainage system of the body. It resembles the blood system, but rather than transporting red cells in blood, it transports a clear fluid called lymph. So every day, about two liters of fluid leak from our blood system into our tissues, and this eventually becomes lymph. The lymphatic system collects that two liters of fluid and returns it to the blood system through the veins in the neck. This prevents our bodies from becoming water waterlogged. And in fact, in a disease called lymphedema, this is essentially what happens when we have problems with our lymphatic system, fluid collects in the limbs and causes this debilitating condition called lymphedema. Why is the lymphatic system important for our immune system? The lymphatic system is a sort of immune surveillance system. It protects us against pathogens. We're constantly being invaded by bacteria and viruses. We take them up through our food, we breathe them in, they get in through wounds in our skin, and they must be removed by the immune system. If this didn't happen, we would die. Because the lymphatic system is constantly filtering the contents of the body, it collects these microorganisms, which have been engulfed by immune cells, and carries them to the lymph nodes. Within the lymph nodes, there are cells called T cells and B cells, which recognize these pathogens and which multiply in response. So the lymphatic system acts as a collecting system and is clearly uh, an integral part of the immune system. And what happens when cancer cells enter the lymphatic vessels? Cancer cells spread through the lymphatic vessels. We usually think of a, a cancer as being a single tumour which divides uncontrollably, but in fact what really happens is that cells constantly break off the main tumour and then they enter the lymphatics and spread to the lymph nodes. We probably all know somebody who has had cancer and we know that when you have cancer in the lymph node it's a bad sign. Once the tumours reach the lymph node, instead of activating the immune system in the same way as bacteria and viruses do, they actually suppress it. So cancer can actually survive within the lymph node and spread to distant tissues from the lymphatics. And can your research help us understand and possibly treat the spread of cancer? Yes. We, uh, unlike other people who have been looking at the way that cancer cells uh, trigger the division of the lymphatic vessels, proliferation of lymphatic vessels to feed the tumour. We've been looking at how cancers actually influence the nature of the lymphatic vessels themselves and we've been carrying out molecular fingerprinting of tumour lymphatics. We've identified some molecules which are upregulated, more of them are made, in tumour lymphatics and we think that some of these molecules could be useful uh, for anything from uh, diagnostics to uh, predictors of, of cancer outcome and perhaps even uh, for targeting new therapies. What are the most important lines of research that has developed over the past five or ten years? I would say there's probably three or four that I can think of. The first would be the application of new microscopic imaging techniques. So the development of these techniques and new models in which one can look at lymphatic vessels which are fluorescing one particular colour and then immune cells fluorescing another colour. When combined with high resolution microscopy one can actually witness the events in real time and see exactly how cells enter the lymphatics and traffic within them. The second would be probably research into uh, molecules called chemokines which are released by lymphatic vessels and which lay down a chemical scent which then allow entry and attraction of cells into the lymphatics. I think this is going to be really important. The third would be research into growth factors that regulate the division and multiplication of lymphatic vessels. So these are the factors that create new vessels in wound healing or in diseases like cancer. So obviously if we can understand how to block these growth factors or manipulate them, that would be very useful. And the fourth would probably be how do tumor cells actually suppress the immune system when they reach lymph nodes. I think understanding this is going to be fundamental and this is a new area of research. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? 
I think from what I've said, you would imagine that there must be a huge drive into lymphatic research. But in fact, lymphatic research has been relatively neglected over the last few years. And we're one of the few groups in the world that's actually trying to rectify this situation. We have been concentrating very specifically on a molecule called LIVE1, which was discovered in my, in my lab about 10 years ago, and was one of the first molecules to discriminate between blood and lymphatic vessels. So we're focusing our research on this molecule, and we believe that this molecule may be involved in controlling the entry of cells into lymphatics. So it could be important both for tumor metastasis, the spread of tumors, and for the entry of uh, immune cells and inflammation as part of the immune response. So if we could manipulate through this molecule live one, uh, we could perhaps block unwanted immune responses in autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, or block tissue rejection in tissue transplants, or uh, conversely, we could actually potentiate traffic through the lymphatics to make vaccines more effective. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? I think uh, translational medicine is really a wide spectrum. At one end, you've got basic research that's looking at the functioning of basic mechanisms in biology. And at the other end, you've got research that's directed towards cures for diseases and testing new drugs. I think we've got a foot in each camp. So we're looking, as will have been clear from what I've said so far, at mechanisms controlling the entry of cells into the lymphatics. But at the other side, we've been working on cancer and new diagnostic techniques and developing antibodies that might block some of the mechanisms that I've spoken about. So I think in order to develop new cures, you've really got to have a foot in both camps because there's no easy answers to these questions and we can't ignore fundamental biology at the expense of clinical research. So that's why I think we fit in well. We've got a foot in both camps. Thank you, David. Thank you.